also are now going to be talking about just like races, like you know, racial experiences we've had in the school year, racism. Just like no joke. Yeah, in general. Um, I remember the first time I ever encountered it was actually elementary school. Uh, that day really did change me a lot. I remember we were playing in the playground. Who knows where we were playing at that point, but we were playing and I was goofing around with one of my friends. She was white and I was poking her with the grass of stick. And I guess it wasn't one of her good days or something because she took it really personal. And she was like, this is why I don't like you. She was like, it's cause, she was like, cause you are brown and like started like really like pointing out certain things. And that really did like, oh, I was like, oh, okay. Like I just kind of left it at that. Like I walked away and like my friends did see like it hurt me. And so they're like, oh, like you need to tell someone. And when I did, I mean, like, counselors, like, they have their own way of, like, doing things, and at that time, like, you know, she had us both sit in a room and talk about it, and, I don't know, just having me, like, sit there and be with her, it hurt me even more just having to, like, sort of accept her apology, even though I really didn't want to, but I kind of felt forced to, just because I have to, like, keep, you know, I have to keep the relationship, like, it's worst little, like, you know, I really didn't know much, I was like, well, okay, like, I guess I forgive you, then we kind of were, like, like, sort of made to be friends again. And since that day, I kind of like realized that like if I would have said something, it probably would have been a lot more different. But like again, like I was young and I didn't know much. But now, like having those encounters again, the topic before, I really have just not cared and do say what I think just because I noticed that if I don't, it'll never really will go the way that I would like it to or that I think it should be addressed. Because we all have our different thinkings of how it should be done and what should be done. But sometimes like, it does hurt the other person that's like having it. Just having to forgive them and be like, oh, well, it's fine. Like not really guess, you could say like brushed and like kind of put away. But like having to like give them the like, oh, yeah, I forgive you. Like it's fine. Like no worries. And like not really getting taken for their actions. Like I do remember in the counter once we also all had a middle school it was also not addressed well and the person wasn't really held accountable and to um, just adding on to that um, I had a couple experiences like that like kids building a binder wall against um, around me because like that was like the Trump 2020 kind of year and just like I just kind of like got u not used to it but like I just didn't stand up for myself because I didn't know how to and just like I just brushed it off but I like don't, I still don't think that's like okay. Like, and like Indra said, we were probably the ones, I just feel like they weren't getting, not punished, but like getting held account accountable for these situations. But coming back from online school and then having a situation similar to that happen to me during school really shook me and it really made me angry. And in that moment, like I didn't know how to stand up for myself, but I did go to my counselor and then I talked to her and then I talked to my principal and then things got sorted out so quickly. Like in the moment, I knew like she was doing and like everything in her power to like get, get a result quickly. And I just really liked the way she, um, went about that situation like I wish like that happened in elementary school and middle school because I just felt like how I felt was um, valid and they were there for me and it wasn't just something like oh like she didn't mean it or they didn't mean it and stuff like that but just like the way it was handled I feel like that should be implemented in the other school systems and um, I'm just really glad that like I didn't it wasn't a positive experience but it was more it was better from my younger years and I just feel like just having that support system is great and having someone to go and talk to is always and someone there to listen to you and make sure like you're known and like that your feelings are valid it just really helped me and I the way that situation was handled was great I just it gave me peace and like honestly like I will still remember each and every experience that has happened to me that my experiences that my friends have gone to gone through like it just kind of sticks with you it never really goes away so just like having the kids who like say these comments held ac accountable and I know they're just words but words can really stick looking at it now I believe that the new Hispanic generation is struggling to learn without feeling shame Students from K through eight cannot speak fluent Spanish and it has begun a worry for Hispanic parents. Coming from a sister of an upcoming kindergarten, kindergartener, 
I'm leaving my sister's knowledge in the school's hands. As my parents said once, you speak Spanish at home, but when you're at school, speak English. It's sad when you have turned into the no sabo, which means don't know, kid. Um, in English, it's spelled, uh, in, uh, it's spelled, it's misspelled on purpose. Sometimes you can't be one, sometimes you can't be the one because you're, you're, sometimes you can't be one because you're here, you're too Mexican to be white, but in Mexico you're looked up too much and you become too white to be brown. Here's a quote by Selena Quintanilla. You shouldn't care for somebody just because of a materialistic things that they have. This, another standard in the Hispanic industry for both women and men. Girls want crop tops, which sometimes go against religion. Ripped jeans, which are looked down by parents. For various reasons. I can barely get out of the house without getting common too. Don't worry, look at me. <laughs> I can, oh yeah. Uh, you're expected to wear nice clothing. Sometimes even I get commented by teenagers my age because of nice clothing or too extra. In reality, some of us are just trying to reach parents' ex expectations. Thank you for listening and being here today. about favoritism um, and uh, my reasoning is uh, myself and other friends uh, been through certain events that made us rethink our progress and just made us not feel worth it for the for the pe for other people like uh, games or like in sports and we just don't feel enough or we don't feel like we've worked our butts off. I'm oh, sorry about that. Butts <laughs> off, but it just, <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and yeah, I just think that favoritism is like a pretty big thing in our school that shouldn't be like that. I think everyone should just be equal and just be, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be a little personal, so don't look at me with sad faces, por favor. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I went through my junior year this year, and throughout the entire junior year, it was fine. And then mid-junior year, I decided to leave my toxic household and move in with my sister. Um, anyways. <laughs> um, so I'm someone who really does not like talking about my feelings and like to come out and stuff. But with the help that I got this year of me leaving my parents, with Julie Pernardi being like just the one who helped me, who helped me through the entire thing, um, it definitely helped bring another side of me, and I definitely brought me down to a really bad mental state once I left my house. And it got me to a point where I stopped coming to school. I stopped losing my motivation. I would come like half a day and then leave. So sorry for all the teachers. I just completely <laughs> just left with no explanation. But um, <laughs> um, anyways, um, I'm just saying that I'm glad and I'm thankful for Julie for being there, for having like Anyways, <laughs> I'm just glad and thankful that I was able to have someone there who was helping me throughout, who was in the school board and understood what I was going through. And I just want to say that my crisis could be related to any upcoming students, and I believe that I can help anyone, and I want to be someone that could be a, just a help with mental health and someone to reach out to. And I wish I had... Yeah, basically that's it. I don't know. I tried so hard. I tried so hard. So I want to talk about um, kind of like racism. That's, you know, that's not really fun. Like what I've heard from like friends and all that. 
How about like um, slur, like racism, slurs, and all that, like name calling? How about like um, that we have like heard going around around school and like people kind of taking it as a, saying it as a joke and everything? And how, um, how like it makes us feel about it, like being called like beaners and Mexicans and all that, I, like in a mean way, you know? How I wanna um, help the younger generation still learn about the language and about the culture and all that, like not to still have a part of piece of them and not just forget about like being Hispanic and all that, like, like living here in the United States and just like talking in English and all that. Yeah, we want to be. We want them to be proud of themselves and not be, um, not feel like lonely or just feel disincluded, just because of like their skin color or like their um, accents and how and just like being different just because their parents are Mexican or Hispanic or they just didn't grow up living here in the United States or how to like move here and. Like, so I'm also going to talk about racism um, and just like how a lot of the uh, a lot of the kids just like make fun of like the racial slurs like for example um, two years ago someone it was a white kid they wrote like the n-word like on my paper and then I don't really like experience a lot of racist things but I hear a lot of th a lot of the things like coming from the school and it's just like huh it just gets you thinking because it's like you come to school to be to be like feel safe and like be around people and then you just hear what other people experience and the names they 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 get called and it's like oh interesting and yeah and especially because in my class there's only like five or like it's a cup not there's not a lot of people there's not a lot like brown people or like people of color I kind of just like surrounded by whites and um. When you hear white people saying all this stuff about like Mexicans like calling them beaners and all that, it's like, do they think the same thing about me? And you, it kind of, it makes you feel different. Like a lot of the kids, like even if they don't, even if they mean it as a joke, they like just say it. For example, I'm gonna say another example. During soccer, I don't play soccer, but it's just something that I heard. Like someone was like, oh, give of course, give the Mexicans what they want. Because they were like, they were um, separating teams, and they were like, oh, give the Mexicans what they want. Like, as a joke, probably, but it's like, still shouldn't be saying those things. Oh. Um, as a new student, I can say that it's unfair that my friends have had to teach me how school works and everything instead of a teacher. I would like this school to have a teacher, especially for these situations, so that new students feel more comfortable being here and don't feel stressed of learning a new language. I would like new students to feel comfortable and welcome even though they are far away from home. I would like new students to have a safe place at school and not be afraid of to go to school. And I'm not saying that I didn't get any help. The, I did and I'm thankful to Miss Carla, Mr. Shanks, Miss O'Brien and Miss Megan. But I think that we can do better, I don't think. Yeah, the racial slurs or anything that, like I said, racism is not nowhere near what near the teachers. It's nothing that I don't think any of you have heard specifically. But there's just like, there's definitely times where there's people saying a lot of things, like a lot of things. And like, I can say that personally because I've had a lot of things said to me. And I know that you guys have too. Um, but it's like something kind of weird to approach, I guess, because kind of like us, if we were to come to a teacher and tell them, and then you guys go into the student, it would just <coughs> cause something because teenagers are teenagers and they're just going to say that we're, we can't handle it. Or we're like, snitch. yeah, snitch. <laughs> that we're just, I don't know, we're just not strong enough to handle it or something. So we don't really know how we could help approach it and stuff. No further punishment should be given to a certain student for certain reasons that we are trying to change the school system in that way, which is really understandable. So, I mean, giving them a good talk is the only really thing we can do. We can't really say, oh, you're suspended for three days. We just can't do that anymore, I guess.